Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Russell Nudson. And I'm Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash. Welcome to this episode of The Hair Loss Show, where today we're going to discuss the side effects of minoxidil, and we're going to specifically compare topical minoxidil with oral minoxidil. Welcome to The Hair Loss Show. Dr. Russell Nudson and Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash discuss issues relating to hair loss and the medical and surgical treatment of hair loss in both men and women. Right, so welcome back to the show. Thanks again for watching. So uh, one, of the, uh, one of the medications that we use a lot when we're managing patients with hair loss, both men and women, is uh, minoxidil. And minoxidil comes in, in a variety of different uh, formats. Commonly, uh, you can, certainly here in Australia, you can get topical minoxidil as, either as a liquid or a foam, and that's freely available over the counter, so you don't need a prescription here in Australia to get that. Um, but there's also, you can get uh, minoxidil in the oral format, in the tablet format, and that here in Australia, you do need a prescription. There are other forms as well. There are sublingual uh, forms of minoxidil. But in essence, you know, they're what we describe as a topical form of minoxidil and an oral form of uh, minoxidil, which we're seeing excellent results, really good results in terms of, you know, helping and managing people that are suffering from, from hair loss. So... Just a little history of uh, minoxidil was originally orally used to treat high blood pressure. And one of the side effects yeah. of oral minoxidil was general stimulation of hair, which tweaked the idea that perhaps you could use uh, minoxidil to assist as a hair stimulant. And so the idea was we only wanted to stimulate hair on the head, so we yes. put it into a liquid form. And so that came into the marketplace in Australia in 1989 after we did the research in 1984, 85. And you were involved and I was one of the five doctors in Australia doing the research. Um, and so the, the idea behind it was that you apply it just to the area uh, that you need it. And we've learned a lot, obviously, in the last you know, 40 years or 35 years uh, about minoxidil. So in the liquid form, it's formulated with alcohol, propylene glycol as the carrier, mm -hmm. and water. And propylene glycol, unfortunately, has the potential in a small percentage of patients to call the contact irritant yeah. dermatitis. And this is one of the complaints we get about the, uh, the use of the liquid form, that you can get a contact uh, dermatitis. You just get an itchy scalp, and some people say flaking, oh, flaking makes redness, my scalp red. tenderness, yeah. all yeah. of that sort of stuff. So if you get that, then really you don't... It's the, probably the propylene glycol, although I have also seen it in people when you... When you get a, a special formulation made with no uh, propylene glycol in it, they still can get that yeah, reaction. Yeah, I've seen that as well. Uh, so I think there is a reaction potentially to uh, the minoxidil itself. So that's why later on they, uh, the company that was making um, uh, the original form of uh, minoxidil developed as a foam because the foam would not have uh, the propylene glycol and would be less oily, less greasy. And for, particularly for women, this was a big complaint mm. that they got um, oiliness, you know, they got greasiness uh, of the hair associated with it. So there are a few things that are important to remember about it. Firstly, that you don't measure the amount you use because if you've got a small area, you use a small amount. If you've got a large area, you use a large yes. amount. The second thing I would emphasize is that we want it on the skin, not on the hair. And so what I often say to my patients is use a cotton bud dip and paint. Yeah. And then you get less of this side effect of greasiness or oiliness of the hair. The other thing that people um, you know, uh, can complain about um, is more to do with the oral form. Um, you can get hair growth in the face in women from the mm -hmm. topical form. That's why they formed it in a 2% version as distinct from the 5% version for the men. So there was less risk of getting yes. the facial growth, which women weren't very happy about. Um, so you yes. can get that. You still can get it with the topical form. But when you get into the oral form, you need to use it in a dose that's not going to affect the blood pressure, which yes. is quite a low dose. But it can have other effects. Now, in my experience, I've had a couple of patients complain about getting palpitations mm -hmm. from it. So that's a function of the way it affects blood pressure. So even in low dose, if you're sensitive, you could get a palpitation from it. I've had someone tell me that it aggravated their migraine. So if you understand how migraines work, it's, it's the, the pulsatile dilation, dilatation and constriction of the blood vessels in the scalp that cause the, the throbbing headache and the nausea. And because the drug opens up blood vessels, again, if you're very sensitive, even in low doses, it could aggravate yeah. a person prone to migraine. So I've had that. And the other, other one that, that, that people have complained about is weight gain. 
which would be water retention as part of the, uh, the side effects. So these are kind of the different side effects you can get, but apart from the one big one they complain about and they all think they're going to get, which is, I've heard if I use minoxidil, all my hair is going to fall out very, very quickly, <laughs> yes. shedding. And, the dreaded um, minoxidil shed. The, the minoxidil shed. And, they, and, and people obviously think that's a bad thing, yes. whereas I try and you know, reverse the idea and tell them it's a good thing because for the 50% of people that respond well to minoxidil, what's happening is the minoxidil is stimulating the hair follicle to produce the next hair, which pushes out the previous hair faster and starts the next cycle. So it means that the new hair, the stronger hair is coming through. Well, it tells me that if you are shedding on minoxidil, you're yeah. a responder. And only about 50% of people are very good at responders because minoxidil has to be converted in the skin into minoxidil sulfate to work. And that doesn't happen with everyone, does no, it? No, not everybody has enough enzyme to do it. Yes. So if you're shedding, it means you're a responder. So that's really good. And so, I mean, there's a lot to unpack there. So I, I guess the first thing, let's talk about uh, the topical version. So... Uh, I'm sure you, 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 this is in your experience, probably the liquid is probably more prevalently available, uh, readily available in, in pharmacies yes. Yes. than the foam. Yes. Uh, so most people, if they're buying uh, topical monoxyl, that will probably be there. It's also the, cheaper. Than the foam. Uh, so that's probably their first go-to. Hmm. So I think if you're using that, that's fine. Rem you know, as, as Russell was saying, remember, it's got to be applied to the scalp. But if you are getting... Uh, and once a day. And once a day. It says twice a day in the box, but I would ignore that because it lasts 21 hours in the skin. So again, you can make it go a lot further if you're only using it once a day and get exactly the same effect. Well, there's two, yeah, so that's, that's very true. There's also the other aspect of things is that the, they're quite prescriptive on the bottle of, of the volume that you need. And well, if someone is thinning over a large area versus someone's thinning in a smaller area, well, that will inherently dictate the volume of, of the actual medication that you need. Absolutely. So you want to apply it to, to the scalp. And remember, you know, parting the hair and applying it to the scalp in that, in that fashion. Now, let's say someone uses the topical minoxidil liquid, starts getting, uh, it starts getting a bit red and itchy. The next thing to suggest, and what we do normally in clinics, is saying, right, swap to the foam. What about transitioning between the liquid to the, to the foam? Is there, should there be a, a gap in time, or do you just go, right, okay? I think you need to let the scalp recover yeah. before you do it. Um, so I would want the dermatitis, if that's what the, the problem yeah. is, to settle down before I um, apply the foam. Um, and that's probably not going to take very long, no, is it? No, it would be yeah. a week, maybe, uh, yes. it would settle down. And they're not going to lose hair during that time? No, not that. in that week. And the other thing that's important to understand um, for people who are worried about when to apply it um, and grooming is that the foam absorbs in 10 minutes. The liquid absorbs in about 60 to 90 minutes. Right. So when people say, well, you know, like, how do I have to sort of shower, like, I had an email last week from a guy saying he doesn't shower for two weeks or he doesn't wash two days after he applies the, <laughs> okay, the, the minoxidil sure because yeah. he's, yes. because he's, he's worried he's, he's washing it off mm -hmm. before it's absorbed. And I was trying to reassure him that even if he's using the liquid, it's an hour, not two days. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that if it's the foam, it's even quicker. So there are slight differences in the absorption between them. Yes. Um, but I think that the, 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 the incidence of side effects from the foam is lower than it is with the liquid, but it's not eliminated. We still no. get people that react to the foam. Because the foam doesn't contain the propylene glycol, which is probably caused the main in, irritant. The, in the main irritant and cause in most of the cases. But like you said, there are certain people who are probably sensitive to the, to the, the active uh, drug uh, but, we, but I find that if we swap them from the topical to the oral, yes. it usually solves all of those problems. Yes. Um, it's, it's, uh, there's side effects on oral minoxidil are less than than anything else that we uh, that we use, as long as you're using a low enough dose. And you can start with a low dose, like a half a milligram or a milligram, and make sure that there's no dramas there, particularly mm. lower dose in the women, because they don't want the facial yeah. hair, than the men. And then you can gradually increase it as you go along. Uh, and we do that through compounding, right? So the tablet comes in one size and people can cut it in halves or quarters. But with compounding, you can specify the dose you want yeah. and vary that and then slowly dial it up with people to see uh, that they're, they're not getting any problems with it. And the other very important thing about this is that the 
the, what we want is something that's easy for people to do. Yes. And if they are not enjoying using the topical product or they find it difficult to remember to do it or find time to do it that fits in with their sleep schedule or their washing schedule, then oral makes it a lot easier for them. Okay. And it'll work a lot better if they take it than if they don't. Yes, so compliance is, is a big issue. But I think to, to the point that you made about the dosing, <clears throat> or certainly the side effects with, the, with oral minoxyl, if you're a patient and you've been put on oral minoxyl and you experience some of those side effects, the palpitations or the, the migraines uh, or, or the, the lightheadedness, does not mean that you cannot take oral minoxyl. Oh. It just means you need to find what the right dose is for yeah, you. I, well, I mean, everybody's unique yes. in this world. And, and, and so there is no one-size-fits-all approach that works for any of these medications. Yes. Uh, and as I said, you can start low to make sure that you're okay, particularly if someone's had side effects from topical minoxidil. You would want to start low, on uh, quite low, uh, on the oral minoxidil and then just gradually dial it up if you're a little bit... I mean, the, the quarter of the 10 is still allegedly at the point where it doesn't affect the blood vessels. Yeah. And there is a, the, in the literature, it tells you that even if you use 10 milligrams in a person who's got normal blood pressure, it doesn't lower blood pressure. Uh, it's, uh, it only lowers blood pressure uh, for people that um, have high blood pressure, but I don't think that's entirely correct because if you have borderline, borderline low blood pressure, I've had patients tell me they get what we call postural hypertension, which means they go from s sitting to standing and they feel dizzy mm. because they've dropped their blood pressure as they've got up. So if you're on oral minoxidil and you find that you get dizzy from changing from a lying position or a sitting position to a standing position, that means that you've got borderline low blood pressure and we have to get the dose down lower. Yeah. So it, and, and I think that's probably, you know, for me, one of the, the, the mission critical parts of this whole process, which is that... Not every, like you said, not everyone is the same. Everyone has a, a unique response into how, uh, how they respond to different medications. And so they may need to be taken down that path of, right, okay, well, this is how we're going to try and build up and find the optimal dose for you. And that's why it's important if you're suffering from hair loss to make sure that someone who knows how to manage this, how to navigate through the different you know, versions of, of the medication and the different doses, why that's really important. As well, particularly to just particularly the because, shelf. that's right, the, the topical ones are off the shelf. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, you're going to need some good advice if you're going to use it orally. Perfect. All right, well, good. I think that's a really good summary of the, of the side effects. So, uh, and I hope, I hope you found that uh, useful. And again, thank you very much I for watching. I would reassure everybody that it's one of our favorite treatments because when we're treating any type of hair loss, you know, uh, when people are concerned about the hair volume, even when they're aging, right? Yes. And, and as we age, we get a little bit thinner and the hairs get a little bit finer. Anything that is a genuine stimulant that gives people that feeling of a bit more volume uh, in their hair is, is beneficial. So I think that Minoxidil is a very useful drug. It's one and of our key. It's one of our key treatments and for people with hair loss. As you've mentioned, you know, it started in 1984, so it's 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 held. It's stood the test of time. Oh yes, we've got plenty of experience with that. We yeah. know exactly what we're dealing with. And and, and that's that's really important. And and you know, it's, it sort of leads on to a great point because there are, you know, you get a lot of questions uh, about oh, what about this medication? You know. Mm. Uh, you know, this medication that's coming on the market that, that's, you know, in phase three of, of trials and all this sort of thing, what do you think? And, you know, is it better than minoxidil? And, I, and one of the things I say is that, look, minoxidil has got this great history. You're riding on the coattails of, you know, millions of people before you that have, uh, you know, walked that path. And then the other thing is that there are the lookalikes, the yes, stemoxidils. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Know, the, the, so they basically change one or two things uh, in the formula of minoxidil and go, oh, this works just as well. Yes. Well, show me the evidence, right? Show me the evidence that changing these so, this part of the formula to that part of the formula actually gives you an equivalent response. Yes. Don't just say, well, you know, it's, it's similar. Yeah, and I think the fact that it's got that much data behind it, you know, gives me that sort of... Uh, much you know that that much more reassurance to be able to authentically you know suggest it to to our patients when we're when we're having that conversation. And one last point is that people who give up on minoxidil give up on it for two reasons: either they don't stand it long enough to mm. see a response, or number two, they are looking for the wrong response. 
So we know that the higher response rate with minoxidil is stabilizing you and slowing or stopping further hair loss, at least for a period of time. Um, um, but they all think that it's failed unless it's regrown hair. Right, yeah. And the other one that I, that I want to address, because we're talking about minoxidil, is, oh, it, I, I hear it stops working after 12 or 18 months. No, it, it's still a stimulant, but if you use a stimulant by itself in some people, it's not enough to stop progression of the hair loss, it'll just slow it down. So it's not that your body becomes used to it and it stops working, it's just it was never going to be 100% effective at stopping further hair loss. Good. Well, thanks again for watching. I hope that's uh, given you a really good summary uh, and insight in that discussion about the minoxidil and its uses and its side effects. Um, again, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, thank you for all your support. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next show. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.